Hey everyone, um, it's Mike here, and we've got Tyler, and we've got uh, Mike Nagel here. Uh, we're live, episode number 10 of the Resellers Roundtable, Crushing the Competition, and uh, it's a show where we talk about reselling Amazon, eBay, Etsy, e-commerce, the whole nine yards, and uh, hopefully it's going to be a great show here tonight, guys. We've got a lot of great topics. We've got some cool items to show you guys, so uh, uh, moving forward here, uh, let's just talk about really quickly the, uh, some stuff that we recently sold. You know, it's always fun to talk about the stuff that we found. But at the same time, you know, um, it's always good to find out what stuff sells for. So let me grab my phone here real quick, and um, let me show you guys what I sold here. Um, I sold this here on um, Amazon. Um, again, as you guys know, I'm a big Pearl Jam head, and I sold a, a CD for, let's see, if you can see, oh, you can't see. Anyway, it's got $38 for a used Pearl Jam CD, not one of the... Uh, Standard studio albums, but they're 2003 bootleg series. So that was a pretty nice uh, flip there. I picked up at a thrift store for about a buck. Um, all right, let's get in the line here. Uh, Tyler, what's happening? Do what's new? What's exciting, man? What's happening with the Tyler over there in Michigan? Oh, yeah, man. I went to a uh, big uh, yard sale trail this weekend, scored really well. I uh, filled the car up for under 300 bucks. Going to make that back really easily. Um, and one of the items that I sold uh, within the last like 12 hours was this uh, on Etsy this vintage knit Iowa State or Iowa Hawkeyes uh, crew neck sweater and it didn't even have uh, the tag on it but still was able to fetch uh, 30 bucks ship for this and I think I paid a buck or two on a half off the Salvation Army so but uh, yeah I love picking up the vintage swag man man that almost looks like an, uh, a Cliff Angle fucking sweater it, That's what it I was gonna does, say. But I, I mean, there was no tag or anything on it, so I said. I to, know, but it just looks—you could totally tell that that is vintage, and I love it. I love yeah. the colors too. It's considering awesome. I interviewed Aaron Rodgers from the Packers, and those would be the same colors, right? <laughs> yeah, those Cliff Angle sweatshirts. If you ever find those, man, there could be gold, especially the uh, Bears, the Ditka one. Holy cow! Especially Not even you... just the sweaters, but I've sold a bunch of the beanies with the palms on top, without the palms. Yeah, I'm getting fifty bucks a pop for those. So, nice. now, Mike, I, you heard I, of that plate? Go ahead, Nagel. Yo, no, go go ahead with what you're saying. My bad. Oh, I sniped them all for under ten bucks on eBay, man, and they were an easy flip. Mm -hmm. When when you were you selling those throughout the year? Just mostly in the winter time. What the the beanies? Yeah, the beanies. Yeah, I picked them up like in. I want to say I picked them up in spring, and it only took like a month or two to sell. So like the palm beanies, sold in the summer. So not this summer, but this happened last year. And uh, oh, so you've been selling on eBay for a while? Not really, but you know, I, I try. I try. <laughs> But yeah, man, I mean, I got 50 bucks a piece, and I was surprised. Nobody tried to do a best offer deal with me. They bought them flat out, and uh, they sold within, like, uh, two or three days of each other. So it was a nice little week there for uh, those Cliff Angle uh, beanies. Those are awesome, man. I mean, and they're getting harder and harder to find, not just the beanies, the sweaters, too. Um, I can't remember the last time I found a Cliff Angle sweatshirt, like, in the wild. In the wild, man. <laughs> you know, I think it's probably been ooh, probably two or three years. Um, but when you, I mean, you'll see them if you know what they are. If you don't know what they are, definitely look on eBay. But um, if you know what they are, you'll just spot them a mile away, whether at a garage sale or or a thrift store for sure. So, uh, Mike, what's new? What's I was new with you. What's, what's exciting with you, man? I know you're you've been sick recently here. Um, I've been super sick, man. I've been I was in bed like the last five days. I had a really nasty infection. I'm on some strong antibiotics, so I cannot have any alcohol this evening. But other than that. I am feeling a lot better, so good to hear. I hope I look better because I looked dead as dog shit the last few days when we were trying to, you know, communicate and shit. So, look good. Hey, real quick, Mike, before you you talk about what you know, what's been, what's been new with you, what's uh, what you sold recently. There's a question in here from Lance, and the question is, uh, any knowledge of the throwback polyester jerseys? Uh, Lance has picked up a Willie Davis Hall of Fame Packers jersey. Um, those things bring any money, Mike? What oh, do you wow. Think? Absolutely. Uh, especially if it's a throwback. Mm -hmm. I, I'll sell those all day. As long as it's legit, you're, you're good. You're good. Especially, like, a team like the... He said it was the Packers, right? 
Yeah, it was uh, Willie Willie Davis. Packers. Willie Davis, yeah. I mean, uh, those throwback jerseys, especially for teams like the Raiders and Packers and Bears, man, that's easy money all day. Yeah, I agree. Especially with football season coming up, price it high right now because it will sell. Yeah, now's the time, guys. If you got any football gear, price it high because everybody starts at zero. Everybody's everybody's in, the, in first place. So once you know the team starts separating and, and if you're, you're stuck with gear of a losing team, it kind of gets hard to sell some of the stuff. Um, but now's the time. People are going to want all the throwback jerseys, the hats, the snapbacks, the you know anything with their team related on it, and uh, people will be glued to the freaking TV on Sunday. So uh, yeah, mean, but I'm that up. You know, I guess that's one of the good things about being a Browns fan because I know every single year people are going to be trying to give away the stuff so I can snipe it really easy and what I want I keep, what I don't. Yeah. But... <laughs> For sure. So what did you sell recently, Mike, besides the item you sold me today, which I can't All right. really outsport this week? Yeah, <laughs> yeah it was pretty sick. Uh so I found a bunch of these WWE plastic ID dog tags for kids with, like, the plastic chains instead of uh, the metal ones. Uh, there's six different ones, and I sent them all into Amazon. I have already sold about seven of these, and they've just been checked in for the last week. Uh, these things are amazing. Uh, I'm getting about uh, between 12 and $15 a pop before Amazon fees, and that's uh, not too shabby for a dollar a piece. So... Uh, yeah, I sold a ton of these over the last... They all got checked in th Thursday, so uh, since Thursday, I've been I've been selling these like hotcakes. Dude, those, those dollar stores is, is money, man. <clears throat> if you guys aren't going out there and looking at the dollar stores, dollar generals, 99 cent stores, hint, hint, um, some of those could be some bank in there. And I went and I, I periscoped it uh, last week and just showed a couple things that I grabbed. Uh, there's money there, you know? There's money for sure. Um, Tyler, a uh, recent find, dude. What you got, Tyler? Got this. Uh, for three bucks, I picked this up at a yard sale. It's a realistic brand programmable scanner, and I pick up scanners all the time. This one's like brand new in box. And one thing that I look at, I don't even like. Most of the time, I'll even look these up. But like, the more buttons, the more money. And this one, I did do some research after I got back because where I was at, I didn't have any service. Um, you can see how much it retailed for way back when at Radio Shack, um, but it'd probably be like fifty to eighty dollars for this one in the condition that it's in right now. So don't overlook even stuff that's made by the realistic brand; it still sells. That's a nice find. I, I was I used to find those a lot, dude. Those realistic ones, just used, I'd get thirty-five to forty dollars for them. Yeah. You know, they're they're great. People are always looking for them. They're hot. They're they're almost as hot as like a. Um, Polaroid cameras, believe it or not. A lot of these oh, scanners, yeah. people are always into them. Wow. Um, here's a question real quick, guys. I don't know who can answer this one. Uh, from Yard Sale Lover. Uh, is there any way to date DC shoes? Um, I don't know off the top of my head. Maybe is there, is there a stamp, um, a date code inside the, 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 the tongue there? I, I don't know. Do you guys know? I have, uh, I have no clue. I just think all the shoes look really fly. <laughs> I don't know how to date them. Super now. fly? <laughs> they're, they're super fly, yeah. I, I love the shoes, but yeah, I, I honestly don't know. There, I'm sure there's a website. If you Google it, I'm sure there's a website that can <laughs> break it down for you. Yeah, there, there's got to be something out there that identifies those shoes. Um, even just a simple call to the manufacturer, you know, or email them. Say, is there any way to determine if these are, you know, newer or older models? You know, they'll be able to help you out to some extent or get you in the right direction for sure. Um, and then again, there's the, the same thing. Looking on eBay looking on the complete listings, the active listings, trying to find something similar to what yours look like or, or use Google uh, Images and type in, you know, DC shoes. Um, so, yeah, that's cool. Uh, looks like Marco went to the freaking store and he got some Hot Wheels. He's throwing some Hot Wheels. Ain't no money in Hot Wheels, guys. Stop talking about the Hot Wheels. <laughs> Stop running my turf, man. I'm the Hot Wheels king. <laughs> and All I right, can so only I... that because Scott is in here right now. Yeah, Scott's <laughs> got some uh, storms, some weather issues. Uh, his power's out, so... Uh, we're going to miss him here tonight for, sh for sure, for sure. Uh, so I was out um, over the weekend, and, um, you know, I, I was talking about this last week, you know, these, these outlet stores, these discount stores, the Marshalls, TJ Maxx, and uh, they all have clearance over there, right? And there these are just sitting there, Nike swim goggles, right? Uh, paid, they were $5, and there, were, there was a big sign that said half-off clearance, so 250 
for two pair, not just one pair. And um, these are kind of all over the board on Amazon, but they're all over like twelve bucks and up. So for two fifty, at the worst case scenario, thirteen dollars I'll take. But um, some of these I was looking up, they're they're twenty thirty dollar goggles, and um, I, I picked up a lot of cool stuff out there at the the Marshalls, and just they're just blowing stuff out. You got to find out when they're having these sales. And then go in there and clean house. I mean, I picked up pairs of uh, socks for like a buck. I picked up Ralph Lauren ties for two dollars. I was just picking up a bunch of stuff and um, underwear, t-shirts. I mean, they have name brands there, Ralph Lauren stuff like that. Um, if you're approved for clothing um, on Amazon, or if not, you can you can definitely sell all this stuff on eBay as well. I mean, there's a market for that for sure. So I uh, picked up a bunch of these swim goggles. I think I'll do pretty well. Really excited about that. Um, actually, we're gonna keep a couple too because. Uh, the kids need some, so. <laughs> all right. Um, all right, let's get into some questions here because we had a bunch of questions. I want to make sure we get to these here tonight. Uh, the first one here is from uh, Nelson Ramirez. Can you provide any insight on how to recognize products that are not currently sold on Amazon? It would be great to sell products that Amazon doesn't offer. No Amazon competition. Crush it. Yeah. Uh, let me just give my brief little stint on that. Anytime you can get away from the competition, whether it's Amazon or other sellers, and create your own listing or find products that you can put on Amazon, you're going to win, right? Now, Absolutely. if you can do it in a, in a manner you know, where you're creating your own barcodes, you're putting your own barcodes out there where people are, even if they scan that item, it's just not going to show up. They're going to have to manually type it in. That's another good way to, to yep. you know, stay away from the competition. But again, remember, anytime you can do that, you have the advantage there, and um, there's no race to the bottom from my experience. Uh, what's your thoughts, Tyler? Yeah, I, I have to totally agree with you. I mean, there's... And there's products that every day that, you know, Amazon is not going to come back and stock on, and it's being able to take advantage of that when you can because, I mean, Amazon pretty much outcuts everybody for the most part, but, you know, eventually they are going to run out, and then you just take advantage of it when they do. Yeah, I mean, anytime you can just go out there and just find these different products, there's millions, guys. I mean, it's not like everything that is around you is on Amazon. It's not. I find stuff all the time, whether it's health and beauty, groceries, toys, Freaking Hot Wheels. <laughs> um, what, what, what do you think, Mike? Well, you know, I guess one of my niches on on Amazon is like the baby products. I, I tend to find like the pop culture stuff that nobody has listed, and there's different variations of the ones I find. So I create new listings for everything, and unfortunately, I guess people are looking it up by the pop culture reference, and people are hopping on Merchant Fulfilled and just dropping the price down so ridiculous but since I created the listing you know I'm pretty much the only person doing FBA on the listing I created so I have an advantage over them because people would rather buy it through me because they have that guarantee through Amazon and I have had no trouble selling the stuff in the listings I created um, something for example like uh, I showed in, in one of my first haul videos uh, that I did specifically for Resellers Roundtable, uh, which is free on Facebook. It, you know, it's a great group, and uh, you know, Mike and I are, are moderators and or admins or whatever you want to call us, and we got a bunch of other people uh, helping us run the show. Uh, but getting back to the point, uh, at Target they had a bunch of these uh, glass pens on clearance for a dollar a piece and you write on your cars with them and stuff you know for celebrations uh, I created a bunch of listings for them and people just jumped on them and killed them and dropped it so low they all sold out I'm selling them for 15 bucks a piece still so yeah. you know sometimes it's it, it just it's very advantageous to be patient and wait sometimes especially if the margins are that good turning a dollar into 15, you know, and I bought over 40 of them, and I think I only have, like, 20 left. So, you know, I've already made back a lot of money on those. So, you know, it, it just pays to be patient sometimes because it, it, it can go to both ends of the spectrum. You can have a lot of success quick if you create a listing, but sometimes people who don't know what they're doing can jump on and ruin it pretty much. But then the ranking gets so low because they sell out so quick, so cheap. It's it's prime for the picking. So yeah, I mean everybody's at different levels and everybody's got different ideas of profit margins, and that's you know it's crazy to think that way. But there's some people that are just happy with twenty, thirty percent. It's like, oh come on, I'm I'm here to make money, not just to scrape by. But uh, 
you know, um, if there's nothing worse than when you create a listing and somebody jumps on there and they're just they're willing to do it for ten cents. You know. <laughs> well, I mean, figure this: uh, I'm making nine dollars a piece oh. profit after Amazon fees, after mm -hmm. each one sells, and I've sold twenty of them. That's hundred and eighty dollars back on forty dollars I invested on them. So, you know, that's a good profit margin to me, and I still have Heck twenty. Yeah. Tyler, do you ever create your own listings on Amazon? Is it, is it difficult? or? Yeah, it's not too bad, but you just got to make sure you put in as much information as you can and good keywords. And, you know, you make a solid listing with some good pictures, you know, your stuff will sell. And like what Mike did, you know, people will start to jump on that because other people don't know how to make listings or they just don't want to end up making a crappy one or something like that. And I know I'm going to have to start doing a bunch uh, soon here when I start going through the rest of all these plush that I found that I can't look, find on Amazon right now. So, And the, the one other piece of advice I would give to people creating their own listings, if you're doing things like shampoos, soaps, um, glass pens, please try and fill out everything you can in the vital statistics part because they will put it under hazmat review and you will be screwed for a little while. Yeah, good point. Um, and make sure you're, you're using all the descriptions, everything you can, right? If it's a name brand product, you know, I see a question from Jason Roberts here. When you make your own listing, do you need to advertise it to get the traffic? Not if it's a name brand product or something that's desirable that you see people are searching for, right? So, like, for example, if you're typing in gluten-free uh, hand lotion, I don't know, <laughs> something <laughs> like that, right? You want to see if that's available, and if, if, if you're typing it in on Amazon and it's popping up with our listings, yeah, yours is going to be there. I've never ever paid to, to advertise any of the products that I've gotten on Amazon unless it was something that was, was new to market, like there was no branding on it, it was my own brand, a private label, something of that nature. Then that, that's, I think, when you use some of the advertising to, to get some traffic over there or, or even using social media, Instagram, Facebook to drive traffic. But if it's like, you know, if, if, you've got, if you're finding Hot Wheels out there that you're like, hey, man, these are not on Amazon, Realistically, when you create that listing within 24 hours, or, I mean, a lot of times it's right away. It, you're getting traffic, right? People are going to be able to search it, you're able to find that item. Uh, so if it's a Hot Wheels Corvette or you know the Hot Wheels Batman, <laughs> you know, it's going to pop up, and you're going to be pretty good. So I don't think you need to go and and pay for you know the the pump and, and the, the feed there, but and don't forget to add the picture because they will suppress your listing and it will not be searchable. That would mm -hmm. probably be the best piece of advice if you're looking to make sure that you know people see your listing. Make sure you have a good main image. Yep. Yeah, for real. All right, awesome there. All right, so hopefully that answers your question there, Nelson. Just uh, just go out there and find the opportunities. They're out there, right? Maybe think of some bundles. Uh, try to find stuff that's local, stuff that's made in the United States, stuff stuff that's. Uh, Gluten-free, healthy foods. Look at stuff like that. <laughs> Barbecue sauces. <laughs> um, <clears throat> here's a good question from uh, Maureen. She says, uh, uh, "To put uh, does not apply for the UPC in bulk update mode eBay." You guys know what, know what she's talking about there? You know, like the identifiers where you know it's you got to put the UPC in there, and if it's if it's something you're selling that doesn't like a, like a piece of clothing, there's not going to be a UPC for it if it's used. So it does not does not apply. I don't know where you can bulk change that, honestly. Um, do any of you? You mean where yeah. you can add it? Is that what you're asking? I haven't run into that issue where I needed to do anything. You guys hear me? Okay. Something's going on here. Yeah, I can, I can hear you. I can hear you now, yeah. All right, yeah, something popped over. The, it's so hot here, it's like freaking 110. It's just it's just frying everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right, so I didn't hear you guys. Did you guys answer that question? Yeah, I, think I there's not. Like, like, is it she's trying to figure out that, you know, where to put in the UPC or what? what is it? I just don't understand the, the question. I think what she's saying is there a way to bulk update the uh, does not apply. So, like, if you're relisting your items, right, for example, and you run a relist 50 at a time, 
can you automatically just select all those items if the, if, you're, if you're coming up with that error where it says, hey, uh, you need to have this identifier, or you need to have this UPC code there to actually s just hit a button and it just says does not apply to all of them? I don't know I if mean, it does that, to be honest with I you. I think you can select all and then go into edit and then try mm -hmm. go into the uh, item specifics and try and do it for each one, but they may make you do it to each individual one because, you know, there's different item specifics for everything. Because it'll just bulk save it as the same thing for everything. So it might just be yeah. easier to go in and manually change it. Yeah, because you're going to have individual products. I know sometimes when you go on there and you, like when I do my relisting, you know, I'll select like a whole page at a time, then it'll bring everything up. And then you can do some editing and stuff in there. But I, I guess I didn't scroll over far enough to see if there was a UPC thing. But when I use Octiva and I'm listing a new product, it always asks me, okay, does, would the UPC apply? And if I do have it, you know, I'm going to put it in because people can search it that way because I know on my app for eBay, you can actually scan barcodes, and so it'll help your listings come up. Yeah, me too. If people, you know, are going to try to look for a product that way, you know, so it just, you know, gives you a little more exposure to your items. Yeah, I mean, you definitely enter that um, the UPC codes in for anything. I mean, you know, if it's if it's a DVD, believe it or not, I mean, it, it gets in that best match. It gets in the search engine, and that's people are finding it that way. And um, yeah, I've been doing it with DVDs since even before it was required. Um, it's definitely a really easy way to get you know bumped up in search. So mm -hmm. for things like books, DVDs, electronics, if it comes in the box, definitely at least add it if you have it available. But I mean, for clothes. You really don't have to worry about it. Cool. Hopefully that answers the question. I'll have to look into that a little further here. Um, I've just been putting in there just does not apply, you know, and just uh, just doing the drop down for it. I got a fly over here that's just bothering the heck out of me. <laughs> <laughs> um, kill you, fly. Uh, all right. So moving on to the next question here from Caroline. Uh, she says, I have T-shirts and I'd like to know if they are vintage. Is there a website I can go check tags and see if they are? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's a couple out there. Um, you know, there's defunct, D E. F U N K D dot com. You can check that out. They have a nice good uh, catalog of the, the tags to look for. Um, and that's really what it is. You just gotta, you know, to identify them. A lot of them, I get this asked a lot from me. You know, where people are like, "Hey, is this vintage?" Um, obviously, when you're new, you have no idea. You know, but after a while, like, I mean, obviously, to some people, looking at the shirt, they might they might know right off the bat that I'm wearing a 1980s Blackhawk shirt. Some people might say, "Oh, dude, they just get that at Sports Authority." You know, and it's all it's all about the tags, and then it's all about the look, the feel, and there's a lot more to it. Um, and I think I see a lot of people that are out there hunting for this stuff, and they'll skip over vintage T-shirts if there's no tags on them. And I'm like, hey, that's good for me. I'll pick them up. I know Ty I know all of us do vintage T-shirts here on the panel here. Uh, Tyler, what's what's your thoughts with uh, vintage T-shirts? What's kind of the best way to learn? Is there um, a better tool out there? I know with with my paid stuff, we we have some tools, but uh, um, mm -hmm. what about for you in terms of helping people identify vintage t-shirts. Well, I know like a lot of times at the bottom of a graphic or something like that, I have a couple of them here. If I can dig them out. Um, this one. Nope. But um, I know a lot of times at the bottom of a graphic and stuff like that, they'll have like the year printed on them. And then a lot of times too, when I'm looking at t-shirts, if they're thin and uh, they say, you know, made in USA, that's, that's a big one too. Um, yeah, but I mean, there's I haven't used anything to like actually like go out and like do research just on that, but you know, you can pretty much tell when you pick up an old shirt, you know, that it's older and not, you know, made to look like it's old. Absolutely, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah do you, now, Tyler, do you do the uh, armpit test? Do the what? The, the armpit armpit test with the Vince's t-shirts, you know, you got to lift it up and just give it a whiff. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> no, <laughs> can you imagine that someone's going to the thrift store? Mike says you got to do the freaking armpit test. <laughs> You'll get staff infection. <laughs> Mike, any any tips on vintage T-shirts or what to what to kind of look for? Um, Man, I I love T-shirts, and if you look in my store, that's like a majority of the things that I sell in my eBay store. Um, I don't know, man. Like the Pearl Jam shirt I sold you, like. I immediately saw it, knew it was vintage based on the tag, you know, everything looked right, sent you a picture, and you're like, yeah, send it to me now. So I, I figured it was vintage. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, after after doing this for such a long time, I mean, you pretty much get accustomed to know if it's vintage or not. 
And a perfect example would be uh, that Nike t-shirt that I think I showed a few months back that I found for like a dollar. And it had a really old Nike tag said made in the USA. It was really thin, but the graphic was perfect. And I was pretty sure it was an 80s shirt. And I went on Defunct, I checked the tag, and it wound up being uh, uh, from the period between 1980 and 1983, and it was legit, complete legit. Um, the blue tag Nike? No, it was uh, it was an orange tag Nike. Orange, yeah. And uh, yeah, made in USA, and you know that was one of the first things that like let me know that it was definitely vintage because Nike is no longer made in the USA. So, you know, where's it made? Where's it made at? Some sweat shop? Yeah, probably. At least according to Michael Moore it is. But, um, <laughs> you know, I just love going through the t-shirt racks before even, like, the, the dress shirts and the and the blazers and the jackets and the pants and the shorts, all that stuff. I like going through the t-shirts. That is, that is like, uh, cathartic for me. That's like me going to, like, uh, you know, having a religious experience or something because you never know what you're going to find. I actually just found an Alice in Chains vintage shirt, and uh, there's no size tag, but I know it's vintage. What size is that shirt? Uh, I'm not measuring two pieces of clothing for you in the same day. <laughs> I'm interested. Um, I think I'll, it's. I'm a, me- I think it's a medium. Oh yeah, I'll pass on. Um, yeah, but, just you yeah. know that I, I get that rush too, Mike. When I'm out there in the thrift stores, I mean, I'm looking at that black clothing rack, and I'm just like, Hoo! and you know, you sometimes you could spot it, the difference in the fading and the black. And you're like, yeah. oh, there's a, there's a honey hole. What is that one? You know, and you're trying to get to it. The worst is when somebody's in front of you and you're at the thrift shop and you're flipping the hangers. And you're like, mm-hmm. damn, is this person going to beat beat me to that punch? You know. So sometimes I just jump right right on top of their freaking shoulder, right? And I'm just like, okay. Because <laughs> I hate happened, that, man. That happened to me with the Nike shirt. The guy was complaining I was moving too slow in my section. He wanted to go over there. So I was like, okay, I'll switch with you. And he mm-hmm. went over there. First shirt I found was the Nike one. He passed over it. So cool. Yeah, but I, I, mean, a lot of, I think majority of these these resources that are out there, they're, they're everybody's got their own game, their own thing. But um, you know, it's it's interesting to me why a lot of people just skip over vintage. When I do really really well with vintage, and there's no, I don't see this uh, race to the bottom um, effect with with vintage clothing at all. I mean, Tyler, do you do you see that at all? I mean, it definitely changes more people selling vintage clothing, but still, if you got something that's rare that's unique, you know, you could hey, sell it, right? Scott's here. What up, Scott? Yeah. That's so bad. <laughs> he back. He back. <laughs> so what do you, what do you think, Tyler? Like the, um, I mean, is this still a viable option as a reseller to sell vintage clothing? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I I don't like when I go through the stores and stuff like that. I hardly see anybody ever go through the t-shirt rack. I mean, and if they do, they're they're looking for like Hollister and Abercrombie shirts. <laughs> that's that's pretty much it. But like I'm. I always pick up the vintage stuff there, and, like, there's been a few times where I've left some, like, NASCAR ones that weren't, like, that great, but they were vintage, and nobody else picked them up. They make it to Dollar Day. I might stay a couple of them, but, I mean, nobody that I know of really around me is picking up that vintage stuff, so it works for me, and I I, I, keep, I actually need to get the shirts to last. That's, like, my thing. It's just, like, all right, let's, it's go time. Yeah, I mean, I mean, here, okay, Silver says, how can there be a race to the... Keep freezing on me. All right. <laughs> I don't know if I what I said like, makes oh, sense. There. We didn't. We didn't hear your question, Mike. Yeah, we didn't okay. hear it. <laughs> Neither did I. So uh, let's get into Scott. Um, Scott, what's new? What's exciting, man? Is this, is a storming out the bayou, man? Is it 100 degrees? What's what's new and exciting? Oh, about that's, you, man? Um, a, like a sudden storm came through here, and um, it was fine, and then it not knocked out the internet. You know, Comcast is very sensitive to. Miss some thunderstorm, so it just it just come. I called them. They said we're gonna be back on to midnight, and it just popped back on. So I was like, let me jump in here and see what you guys are talking about. <laughs> Fa- fashionably late, fashionably late. Well, we're glad to have you, man. It was kind of different. We we're like, oh my god, something's missing. What was missing? We couldn't figure it out. And I'm like, oh, it's Scott. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Scott. We people have been waiting. I mean, you kind of teased us on Periscope, and we got. I got to see what you got. Is that you? Still got to show that item. Yeah, I'm gonna. I got. You want me to show it now? Yeah, sure. show it now, dude. Come on. All right. Um, 
if um, you if you follow me on Blab, I tease you. Hint. And if you follow me on Periscope, another hint. <laughs> you already seen it. But uh, this is something I picked up Friday from a local Facebook group. There's you know, something we always talk about. A lot of us, you know, get to know your people locally. You know, reach out to them, and you never know what you might get. And I picked up this. It is a black Sega Dreamcast Sports, brand new in the box. Oh wow! <laughs> yo yo yo! What Mike froze up again? <laughs> <laughs> he got so excited he froze up. Yeah, again. yeah, that's what I was saying. Um, the last one I picked up like this, New in the Box, I sold it last year for five hundred and forty nine dollars FBA. Wow. And um, I know I know I've seen some people say, Oh, you guys are full of shit, you overvalue video games. No. Amazon overvalues video games. We just take advantage of the market. <laughs> there's a market there. I mean some there's people stick them crazy. They, but that, I mean I, there's no doubt in my mind what you said is legit. Yeah. <laughs> Too legit to quit. Yeah, this is one of the rarest ones too. Even if you find this one used, it's a hundred dollar bill because you just don't find the black one a lot. So be on the lookout for this one used in the box. If you see somebody in the box, buy because it it's a five hundred. That's a five hundred dollar bill in your pocket. <laughs> <laughs> for my teas. All right, I'm back again. What is good? This is like bizarre. It must yeah, be getting hacked. I have, I have no idea what All right. Um. Okay. It's the heat messing your internet up. See that or my? I'm going blind. It's like the screen just goes. <laughs> and then I'm like I look down and everybody's just kind of like. <laughs> um. All right. Let's let's jump into the next question here because there's a couple more. Uh. This one is from Tom. He says I'd like to see some discussion on free shipping versus calculated shipping, as it pertains to eBay visibility sales. Should we incorporate our estimated shipping costs into a buy it now price, or is it just good as uh, is it is it as good or better to do a calculated shipping rate? Does either bring you to the front of eBay searches better than the other? Here's my my thing. I just I like I prefer free shipping, right? Um, and the reason why I do that is because I, it, buyers are crazy out there, right? I mean, there's good buyers and there's crazy buyers, and I don't like to have crazy buyers ding me on my shipping, right? Because it's another DSR, you know. It's like, oh, so I that's I that's why I do free shipping. But I'd like to hear you guys' opinions. I mean, is it better for you have better luck with free shipping, calculated shipping, charging for items? I mean, I've been having more sales when I added the shipping back in in June when it was slow. Okay. Um, people don't seem to mind because I have a set price for shipping. I don't do calculated. Um, Anything not going priority, any shirt or anything going first class is four dollars anywhere in the U.S. Um, if it's priority in a bubble flat rate mailer, goes for six fifty. I combine shipping, and if you buy multiple items, I'll fit it in a priority flat rate mailer. Uh, you know, I do business the right way, man. I mean, even sometimes like that Brooks and Dunn Pearl Snap shirt. And it's going to California, and it would have been first class. Dude paid $4 for shipping last night. I sent it out in a flat rate mailer just because I didn't want any of those buttons to get messed up. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if, if they're paying something for shipping, you know, I, I'm going to give them good customer service and go that extra mile for them. Yeah, it cost me an extra dollar seventy to ship it. Oh, well. You know, what was it like when I was doing the free shipping? You know, I was eating it all the time with these really, really bad offers. So, I mean... I kind of like getting that extra shipping money back in. So, I mean, that's just my opinion. Yeah, I mean, it works either way, I think. Scott, what do you what do you prefer? Free shipping or do you charge people? Well, I, I think that if you have an item that people want, they'll pay shipping regardless, right? Mm. But I think if you really, like, most a lot of people are used to free shipping now because it's such a norm in all the big box, well, the retail online places now where shipping is included in the price, so you pay X amount of dollars, you get free shipping, that if you 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 got something that's, you know, like, you know, a little more obscure, I think it'll help you in the rankings with the shipping. But if you got, if you got a widget that's selling, it doesn't, if you ship it or not ship it, it's going to sell. If it's something somebody wants, they'll buy it. But if you're looking for specifically trying to get up in rankings, I think free shipping is the way to go. 
That's yeah, it, it, it seems like it works on everything. I mean, I'm reading yeah. the comments for two, and everybody's saying, hey, I'm, I've been doing it for a long time with you know, free shipping. I've been doing it for over 15 years with Calculated. Tyler, what's your thoughts, man? I mean, you do free shipping? or I've, I've tried it both ways. Mm -hmm. um, I felt like I had more success when I charged for shipping. Um, like Mike, I would do like a flat rate for um, T-shirts and then like sweaters and then like uh, a different rate for like shoes and stuff. And then I have done some stuff free shipping. I do have stuff that's in my store on um, free shipping. I don't see a difference really in that stuff selling quicker than stuff that I charge shipping for. So I don't know. I got a little bit of both in the store, and um, I just, you know, to me, I don't notice any difference either way. Yeah, I think, you know, really, you know, if you're – if you're new to it, or if you're maybe going, hey, wait a minute, you know, my my sales are kind of iffy right now. Maybe change it. We, you know, you, you shouldn't be doing the good till cancel listings anyway. Just do the 30 days. That's where I think, you know, the better option. But after the 30 days, then just tack on the shipping. See if it makes a difference. I mean, that might jolt it a little bit, and you know what I mean. Ugh. <laughs> just jolt it a little bit for eBay, and freaking next thing you know, you're selling the items. So why yeah. not, you know, why not give it a whirl and see if it works out for you? Try it either way. Um, I just do free shipping. It's just easier for me. And um, but either way, it sounds like it works. Um, I mean, the only for... thing to, to to go back to Scott's point with all the big box giving free mm -hmm. shipping with everything, they're not letting you make an offer on what you're buying from them though. So a lot of these people are really greedy. I mean, you know, we all send offers to people and we know what's up. But at the end of the day, if I'm gonna be giving my item away, I'm gonna get paid for the shipping. I'm yeah. not just going to give it away and lose money. Mm -hmm. yeah, you do pretty well, Mike, on your post. I've seen in the re uh, Facebook, the reseller phone table. You know, you're, you're you're selling shirts thirty-six dollars with four ninety-five shipping. You know, and it's like, hey, cool. You know, it's almost got me thinking. Well, maybe I should kind of change it up. But uh, back on the topic of with eBay, you know, when you're getting these people messaging you, use that send offer option. I mean, I've been doing really well with that. Somebody will inquire about something. I'll go, oh, you know, let's just see if they're let's see if they're going to freaking be a fish day and bite. They're going to bite that hook, right? Let's say my item's $35, and they're saying, hey, is uh, is there any buttons missing, any flaws? No, there isn't. And then, boop, here's an offer, you know, 25 bucks. You and know what? I'm, not, no, no, people, I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mike. I'm sorry. No, go ahead, man. I mean, believe <laughs> that people are like, you know, I would say three out of four people are taking the offers. It's pretty cool from my experience. But what were you saying, Scott? No, I was going to say, actually, I actually, from my phone, I actually um, sent the offer and – some additional photos because mm -hmm. I didn't realize I didn't realize you could send people photos when they message you now from mm -hmm. my from the phone app. So because I remember you talking about that and I finally got a chance to actually send somebody an offer and I was like they asked a question about the item so I took some additional photos of it and sent it with the offer and they ended up buying it. <laughs> so that's my story. Heck yeah, definitely. It's definitely interesting, you know. Just look at all the options eBay gives you, and and see what works for you. I guess is the best uh, best advice we can come up with. Um, all so right, next question here is. Places, Mike, they even like try to reel you in by spending more. Like, there's one site that I deal with, and if you spend over fifty bucks, mm -hmm. then you get free shipping. But other than that, it's like you know a flat rate of five bucks. So I see a lot of stores doing that too. They still offer it, but you got to pay up for it. Well, I yeah. mean, here's the here's the thing I do. If you buy multiple items from me, it's going to go out priority mail. And I'm going to give you a really good rate on it, and I may even, you know, give you such a discount where I pay a little bit towards the shipping. But, I mean, you know, if, if you're going to be willing to spend the money, I'm going to give you a break on that shipping price. It's not like I'm going to make you, you know, pay three times over for shipping or four times over like some of these other sellers do. So, I mean, you know, charging shipping for something isn't really a death sentence on eBay. It's not, uh, in my opinion, it doesn't really hurt your your search ranking. I think it's a lot of other crappy stuff going on in the, in the eBay system right now because they're trying to work out some stuff apparently, uh, and I think that's what's really affecting the search ranking. I don't think it has anything to do with the, the cost of shipping or, you know, anything like that, but... Since we're talking about shipping, here's a question from, um, hopefully I'm pronouncing this right, uh, Janine. Uh, you know, regional shipping boxes, what does it mean? I asked the post office here in Illinois, and they couldn't even explain them. What WTH, what the hell? Yeah, it's Illinois. Hey, man, I ain't, there's some boxes. What do you want, what do you want from me? <laughs> yeah? 
Regional boxes, they're over there. Well, how does it work? I don't know. Go figure it out yourself. Tyler, what about regional boxes? I mean, is it worth looking into? Uh, maybe kind of give us a synopsis of it. What is it? I mean, is it worth having these for your business? Oh, yeah. I, I have them uh, in stock and stuff like that. And I usually when I look at, like, um, when I'm shipping an item and stuff like that, depending on where it's at, obviously, um, where it's going to end up, I look at, you know, when that thing comes up and you can kind of look at all of your options, I, I look through there and say, okay, will this go, is it cheaper to send this priority in, like, one of those uh, Tyvek envelopes, or can I put it in a regional A box or sometimes regional B? And they have different sizes of each one. They have, like, the, the little box ones, and they got, like, the long skinny ones. And I think, you know, as I usually just have, like, one pack of each on hand, and I just make sure I'm checking that because you don't want to end up – because sometimes I've looked at it too and it's like I'd spend 2 or $3 more to put it in one of those bags than I would if I was put it in a regional A box. So I keep them around because you just want to be smart with your money and your shipping and it's just a really easy way to to manage that. Look at all your options. They're giving you that for a reason. Yeah, I mean, you could say you're going to save money. And, um, I mean, Mike Nagel, what's your thoughts on the regional boxes? Do you use them or do you just use them to freaking uh... – I mean, I, I use them once in a while to pad some other packages that I send first class. No, um, but the the regional boxes are good because some of them are as big as the flat rate ones, and you get a better cost on shipping stuff. So, I mean, why not take advantage? Yeah, guys, Krillin in the comments here says, uh, you know, because they don't stock them up by me either. You got to order them online, and it's yeah. free. So just uh. You know, for me, they don't. There's no postal service here, so I gotta actually go to the post office and pick them up. Scott, what's your th overall thoughts on the the regional I, boxes? I think if you live in like in the middle of the country, like I am in the Midwest, where we have overlapping zones, you you'd be crazy not to have regional boxes on hand because you, you save so much money. You know, I live in Indiana, and it's, I can get cheap shipping to pretty much any place in my general area. You know what I'm saying? Except it's extreme East Coast, extreme West Coast. So if you live like right in the middle. You need to have A, B, A and B boxes for sure you know, in stock. <laughs> for sure. Because <laughs> a lot of times, somebody said in the comments, a lot of times it's cheaper, way cheaper than the padded flat rate. Yeah, mm -hmm. so you yeah. definitely, had them, definitely have them on hand. Good stuff. So all of you guys that are watching right now, we're over 100 viewers. Really appreciate that you guys uh, showing some support for us here on episode number 10. If you do like this stuff, just hit the like button. It tells us uh, we, we keep moving forward. we got a special announcement towards the end of the show of what's going to be happening in the future, which is really exciting. And uh, um, But before we get into uh, our last finds here, um, there, we got a couple more questions here, and I think this is a really good one. It's from Diane. What percentage of sales did you use to uh, reinvest in sourcing when you first started? Mike, let's, Mike, let's, let's go to you, Mike. What, when you first started doing this, were you saving any money, or were you just going, hey, man? Dumbass when I started doing this. And, uh, I mean, looking back, you know, it's such a long time ago, but it really isn't, right? Um, yeah, man, I was just taking whatever I wasn't using to buy cigarettes and beer, flipping right back into the into the merch. And this was the period of time when I wasn't really checking everything that I was buying, so there was a lot of wasted money during that period. So. You know, and and now it, it's really important to, for me at least, to make sure I take at least something out every time I do a withdrawal from my PayPal, whether it's five, ten, twenty bucks. You know, you just save something for a rainy day because you'll never know when you need it. I needed it a couple weeks ago when I was supposed to go to L.A. My dog got sick and I got stuck with a six hundred dollar vet bill. So. It was nice that I actually saved, uh, you know, quite a bit of money, and I was able to cover it. But, you know, I, I notice a lot of people who are new in this business don't treat it like a business and save because there's no retirement plans in this game. So you, ne you need to look out for you. Just like when you're going out sourcing and stuff, you're taking care of business. I mean, who's going to take care of business for you when you're no longer able to do this? You know what I mean? I mean, who's going to change the diapers, Mike, right? I mean... There's no 401k. Yeah. There's nothing. You know? I mean, what's your thoughts, Scott? I mean, when you first started, were you saving some money? How, how, did, how did you do it? Um, um, I, I was like, I was like, Mike, um, it's kind of like I can, you know, give the uh, analogy. It's kind of like 
you, when you're a server or a bartender, you always like you used to money coming in every day, so you expect it to be like that, mm -hmm. and you don't really understand that it could be you know to it can be turned off instantly until the day you don't make any money, and then you're like, whoa, I can't just you can't do that. So yeah, I didn't save at the beginning. And uh, <laughs> luckily, I met some of the right people. You know, I met Mike, <laughs> and um, I, I started I started saving by putting my money away at different places. It, you know, don't get so caught up in like uh, percentages or anything when you first start off. Put just as long as you're putting something away. You know, take care of your bills and your expenses first, and always put something, even if it's ten, twenty dollars. You know, save something. You know, and then once you start getting money rolling in consistency, consistently, you know, then say maybe I put away thirty percent off the top, you know, every payout or every every week or whatever. But at the beginning, just focus on saving something, you know, because I know it's hard because you know you got you got seller limits, so restrictions, PayPal holding your money. Maybe you starting on FBA, you ain't you haven't got your inventory rolling yet. You know, your first payout is like you know it's not what you wanted it, but it takes a while to build it. But as long as you're putting away something, so you're putting away something for savings, and and what might cause the picker fund, you gotta have money in both of those spots because you need money for the future, and then you need money over here for the deals. Mm -hmm. It's 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 a horrible feeling when it's a, a deal and you have no money to buy. <laughs> That's the worst feeling in the world. Telling, I was telling Mike about that before we went live. Like I went to Walgreens and they had these. Uh, outdoor cameras and they were all marked down to clearance for 12 bucks a piece I couldn't buy them because you know I had other priorities that my money had to go to but yeah, you know it, it happens yeah it does happen it does happen but you want to have you want to have your money you want to have save for the future and save for your picking because like I said you you, you when those deals come up that dude the guy will call you and you ain't got the money gonna call the next person you know what I'm saying yeah. so you just want to make sure that you always got some money put aside for those deals. Once in a lifetime deals, maybe. You know, whatever. <laughs> yeah, great points there. Uh, Tyler, I mean, when you first started doing this, were you selling, were you saving any of this money up, or, or what's your plan now? Well, when I, I first started, I was, I was still in college, and I was at the point where I was just taking, you know, I, I started off my business with $36. Um, and I've built it up over the years and everything. And when I first started, I, I was still working on campus um, and then, go, like I said, going to school. So I was taking the money that I got, and I just kept reinvesting it and kept building it. Um, it was it was really fun, and I enjoyed doing that while I was at school. And you know, every once in a while, I'd take some money out of the PayPal fund for myself. But at that time, I didn't know what really I was going to do with it because, you know, I was – when I first started, I was like two years away from graduating, and you know, I was thinking about going, you know, doing stuff in my field, and then it's like, well, do I keep doing the business? And then I've actually found a way that I can do both, where I can incorporate what I learned in school and paid all that money to go and learn, and I can still use that and do this at the same time. And I I found a balance for that, and I I do save money. I did set myself up with a uh, retirement. Uh, plan and stuff like that. It's it's cool because like now they can do like automated things where they take out like a certain amount each month from my PayPal because it's like a debit because I have the debit card and stuff. So like I just give the information to them and each month they take out so much money and so it's like I'm making a payment. So I just treat it as that and it's like okay, make sure I have enough money in there to make a payment to my retirement fund and it's just automated. Take it out each month and I don't have to worry about it and I can throw in more if I have a good month and I want to throw more at it, I do that. And if not, I know I'm at least making a minimum payment to it each month. Yeah, and I mean, it's so important to do that because this this industry, even though, you know, some of us have been doing this a long time, things change, you know. I mean, the, my story was when I started reselling, you know, I was thrown into it. I had to support our, my family. So I had to every, keep re flipping all this stuff. I couldn't save money, you know. And then when I finally had an opportunity when I was making good money to save, I started doing that, you know. And... You know, even up to today, I mean, I'm always saving percentages because you just never know, you know. I mean, for people that are new and if this is their first time um, selling online in the, the summer slow months, I mean, it could put you out of business, you know. Um, or going back to what Mike Nagel said, you know, it's there is no 401K, you know. And um, 
I saw so there was I forgot who it was in the comments. They said something about eBay giving out healthcare. Yeah, there's if you become a what is it the top rated seller status or whatever it is, you, they give you some health benefits or something. You got to stand in line with the rest of the with the rest of the Joes, you know, and uh, ten thousand dollar deductible or something. I don't know. No, but you know, <laughs> looking at the healthcare and um, see, you really want all eBay is, knowing your health issues. <laughs> Hey man, it's like Walmart, dude. Soon, I mean, there's already what doctors in Walmart. <laughs> Crazy. I don't want Walmart knowing nothing about me either. Yeah. But, you know, if saving that money is you know not just it's the right thing to do. And I, 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 of all the YouTube videos I ever ever see on here, nobody ever talks about that, and it's just mind blowing to me. It's it's just like why would you not tell people if you're on here to help people? Why aren't you telling them about saving money? Or, or creating these funds. I'm always talking about this. It's mind blowing that never nobody ever does that. And uh, that's, that's got to be like the most important thing, even above finding yeah. merchandise, is, is saving and planning because you, you don't know. Like the slow months we had these last few months, you don't know if that's the norm now. So better safe than sorry. Definitely. Yeah. For, for real this time, not for sure, for real. All right, so let's show um, let's show the final items here. Uh, I picked up these two items really quick. And um, again, I was out today looking around for for some Amazon money, and I stumbled across these. I'm like, hey, I gotta pick these up, you know. Sometimes you gotta pick stuff up, man. Um, <clears throat> all right, this is a brand every everybody should be looking for. Let me see if I can get my camera to focus here, because I know lately it's not been focusing. Right? Never heard of it. Never heard of it. It is. Can you see that? No. Filson. Oh, right. That's an old school one too. Yeah, it's a, it's a vintage one, and these the vintage ones. Look them up. They uh, it's just a standard uh, navy shirt, uh, right? It. Nothing, nothing crazy, nothing spectacular. This is easily thirty to sixty bucks. Um, obviously, the the more intricate, the more coolness, they bring more money. But it's vintage, and um, we were well, talking I mean, about vintage I got earlier. 30. I got thirty for that basic plaid one I just sold yesterday. So nice. You have to be able to get between forty and and probably fifty five for that one, easy. Yeah, I mean, I'm just you know because people out there always say, oh, this guy Mike, he always just inflates his numbers and stuff. So I I just said, okay, let me just let me just tell, let's go back down here. I'm not going to sell for thirty. I'll probably sell it for forty to fifty dollars. Um, but the CC Filson stuff, I mean, look it up. And I mean, this is the vintage tag on it, and uh, they're really. People are out Filson. there. There's not too many that even are out there if you look on the Filson active listings. Gold, man. Yeah, That's right? a good pickup. I couldn't pass it up. You know, I'm like, dang, there it is, dude. Okay, I'll take it. And then this one here, uh, you, Mike, you're going to dig this one, dude. Um, this one is uh, Rocking Ranch Wear. All right, let me see if I can change my camera. Nice. Because um, Mike knows his pearl snaps. <laughs> right? I, uh, I think it's Kensington. Or yeah. Kensington, I'm sorry. Yeah. Check this out, right? Let me go back here so I can show this. I, I just think this is as cool as all hell. I mean, I, lo I pearl snaps. I love some. I just don't grab anymore. But this thing's pretty super fly, right? I mean, oh it's got the yeah, man. Nice wow. soft vest. It's embroidered, man. It's pretty slick. Makes you want to go line dancing. Dude, it does. Makes you want to put on some boots. Let's go, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Yippee ki yay! Let's go, Kim. Come on, we're gonna put the pearl snap on. Let's go to the let's go to the club. <laughs> that um, is freaking cool, man. All right, Nagel, what do you what do you if if you if the great Mike Nagel grabbed this at a thrift store, what do you price this at on eBay? Thirty, forty bucks. Is that, long, is that a long sleeve? Yeah, it's long sleeve. It's got the the triple buttons on the, is know, it, the wrist. Is it vintage? I can't really tell. You know what? Honestly, I'm, I. By the looks of things, it looks vintage, but this this brand is actually uh, it's recent. Um, but it's Kennington, right? Yeah, Kennington. Um, yeah. It's made in China. That's what that's the giveaway. Where I'm like, it looks to me like if I if the tag I mean, was ripped out, I would think this is vintage. But just the feel of it a little bit, and then I mean, obviously it's, the it's not really a big deal if it's made in China. I just sold a Blair one with two holes in the back for twenty mm -hmm. bucks. So, um. I mean, I think you can get between thirty-four and thirty-nine for it. Shit. Okay, here, let me put the tag back up here if you want to look at the tag. I don't think it's vintage. I mean, I'm pretty. Well, I like the way the stitching is on it. Oh, oh okay. It's yeah. Beaded. Look at it, it's beaded. Oh. oh yeah, dude, that's an easy forty-dollar bill. Yeah, forty bucks, huh? Cool. Yep. Maybe I'll wear it next week. 
But make <laughs> oh, sure shit, if, if you're gonna sell it, make sure you ship it out in one of those uh, bubble mailers because uh, I've noticed stuff that's beaded and has pearl snaps mm-hmm. will break if you just throw it in a poly mailer. Interesting. Yeah. So that was my my two little finds there. Freaking. That's awesome, man. I thought those were cool. I'm uh, jealous. You want to buy them for me, Mike? Quick deal. No, I'm good, man. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right, uh, Mr. Tyler, you got another item to show us? Dude, what is all that stuff behind you, Tyler? There's plush shoes. Like you got some beats over there. You got some beats by Dre back that time? What you got over there, man? <laughs> yeah, all kinds nice raw. He's like, I got all kinds of stuff. I, he, he about to turn the camera. Wait, wait, wait. Hold on, hold on now. <laughs> that was supposed to be on camera. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all all kinds looks like he was beats by draw back there. <laughs> <laughs> These are Rockfish X um, hard drive enclosure kits that I got at a yard sale. They were um, a couple bucks a piece. I bought a huge lot of computer stuff. Wow. As you can see, there's like 12 of them there. And um, on Amazon, they're going for like 60 to 70 bucks a piece. Damn. So, and I, I got like four or five boxes of computer stuff. But one of the items I was going to show um, that I don't really see a lot of people talking about is uh, picking up like tools and stuff, uh, brand new. Um, this is one of the uh, retractable, like it's an auto tape one, is what it is, 25 foot. And uh, this is brand new. Got it, bundled up a bunch of other stuff with it. Ended up getting it for four bucks. And um, this on Amazon is going for like 65, 70 dollars, brand new. So don't overlook stuff like this. No. And then uh, another thing that I found that just looked interesting, um, again, while I was out garage sailing, this I paid a dollar for this, and it's a 3D home uh, kit where you can build like kind of like a model of your house. Oh, wow. And so it's brand new, That's in the cool. bag, uh, scanned it. It's like 25 30 bucks. So like when I'm at yard sales and I see anything new, I'll, I'll scan it. And this is one of the things I'd never seen anything like this before. You can see... Up here, some stuff how you can kind of like build a model house and stuff like that. So, I mean, just look out for the odd stuff and anything new with tags, especially when you're at a yard sale, because like they're basically just giving the stuff away. I mean, I paid five bucks total for those two items, and it's like a hundred dollars between the two. So. You gotta love reselling, man. I mean, there's money there, honey. Um, Cherry Vintage just kind of said, "Hey, yeah, that shirt I just showed is vintage, so that's awesome." Thanks, Cherry Vintage. I really appreciate that. Um, for me, I just went fifty bucks now. How much? Fifty bucks. Fifty bucks. Sweet. All right, Mike. Uh, got a question for you, really quick, and then you can show us the, the item here. It's from uh, Krillin. I uh, got a question for you. Just picked up a lot of eight mixed newer WWE action figures. Should I do best offer or auction? Auction. Try and find more before you auction them, too. Because uh, they sell for really good money at auction on eBay. In lots or individually? In lots. Okay. I try and get at least 20, and, and I'll make anywhere from 80 to 100 bucks. And I, I pick them up at yard sales. I mean, or Craigslist. You know, I try and get a really good price. I mean, I'm talking under a dollar a piece. And, uh, you know, I flip it for crazy money. And it's always been like that, especially with, like, the, the newer Mattel figures. It's easy money all day. Nice. Yeah, there's some talk in here. I mean, guys, if if you're worried about Amazon and you're like, man, I'm nervous, I'm scared, don't be. You just got to jump in there, you know. I see Mr. Sadie's over there. I mean, if Mr. Sadie's doing Amazon, and he's, he's been talking about doing Amazon for two years. Now he's doing it and he's... He's making some coin, but uh, it really, honestly, guys, anybody can go out there and do it, and, and, and you know, obviously take some time to read the rules, understand what's going on, but it's something you need to have in your arsenal, you know, for sure. <laughs> uh, but back to you, Mike. The uh, want to show? You have another item you want to show? I don't think I showed a first item. Yeah, you showed us the um, um, the dog tags. I sold those. Oh. <laughs> well, what do you want to show? Two items then? Show, show us whatever you got, dude. All right, fine then. Um, no, um, I picked this up. This is a, a Chilton's Capri uh, repair and tune-up guide from the 70s for the Capri and Capri 2. Uh, really cool graphics on the front. It's got, like, the Detroit D, and, you know, just, like, it's really cool. And you can tell it's it looks like a pacer, but, you know, it's awesome. Uh, I paid a dollar for this book. 
it's a little roached. I mean, there's no writing in it or anything, but someone uh, wrote on the cover of the price tag, you know, so I got to work on cleaning it. It's going to be a little difficult. And uh, the pages have uh, a little bit of dirt on them. So obviously a mechanic probably owned this before I got it. But I mean, you know, it pretty much shows how to fix this book. Um, I paid a buck for it. There's one person selling it for 25 Merchant Fulfilled on Amazon. I think once I clean it up, uh, I'm going to ask 40 bucks for it. And, and I should be able to get it no problem at the end. Nice. Those sell well, really well on Etsy, too. Um, oh, really? Yeah, I've, I've been selling a lot of the ones that aren't top dollar on uh, Amazon on Etsy pretty well. Yeah, this thing was pretty cool. I mean, I love anything having to do with cars. You know, I have the automotive background, especially with selling. So anytime I can, I can find one of these, uh, you know, I pick it up. And then uh, I guess I'll show another item real quick. Let's see if I can do it without destroying everything over here. Yeah, I see people in the chat. Etsy's rocking for vintage. I'm doing awesome. Yeah, I mean, it's I love it. I, I mean, my Etsy's it's growing every month, you know, and so, um, it's gonna be rocking I mean, and rolling to you for for sure. So going with the automotive theme, I found this Kawasaki book. Oh, there you go. Motorcycles. Cool. I love these things. I don't know if I'm gonna sell it. I've actually been uh, hoarding it for a little while, but I mean, this thing is in cherry condition. There's no writing. The graphics are sweet. Uh, the dust jacket has, like, minor wear on it, and for a book that's from, I think it's from the 80s, this thing is, is pretty sweet. Um, you know, I, I love motorcycles and, and all this stuff, but, I mean, I may send it to Amazon, I may not, I may keep it. You know, I actually do read, you know, aside from what certain people have to say. Uh, I have a very nice book collection, especially with, uh, you know, a lot of stuff about how to make money, and it's actual physical books, not the ones on my computer. So, uh, I don't know. You know, I've been flipping through this. I really dig it because, like I said, I'm into motorcycles and stuff. You know, I can flip the Harley shirts, and, you know, it's not a big deal or anything. But I think I may just keep this. I paid a buck for it. So, cool. yeah, man. I mean, Kawasaki was the shiznit back in the day, too. Oh, yeah. Now it's all about Ducati and stuff, but give me a good Kawasaki any day, man. Heck, yeah. Scott, <laughs> so, uh... <laughs> <laughs> so what do you, you got to show us, Scott? Um, yeah, actually, I went to the thrift store today, and uh, I feel like... Like Michael Corleone, man, with the clothes, and every time I try to get out, I get sucked back into it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I was, I was actually, I was actually, I was out actually looking at board games, and I I glanced over at the clothing section, and I had text Mike one of the pictures. Some dude donated. He had it was about 25 Detroit Red Wings T-shirts from the 90s, like championship T-shirts. I yeah, showed me one of those. I showed him a picture of him. Yeah. I, I only bought a couple of those. That's not what I'm going to show because, you know, I'm not a Red Wings fan. I'm not going to advertise them. You should have got them all, man. I would have given uh, you a good price for those. But uh, I did pick the, them up I, for you every day, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> I picked this up, this jersey. It is a uh, throwback Florida State um, Seminoles uh, Warwick Dunn jersey. Nike. That's sweet. We're done. I remember him. It's a tag made in the USA. This is the type of stuff you, I mean, if you're selling clothing, you know, this is the type of stuff you want to look for during this time because everybody's going to be looking for football jerseys. Football season starts up in like a, you know, a couple weeks with uh, college and the pro. Yeah, you missed season. that part of the show. Sorry. Sorry, bro. Uh, <laughs> and then I, I picked up this, this cool-ass vintage T-shirt, dude. Uh, I'll show you the tag first. It's old school Hanes. Show you the tag. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's a good one. It's, it's, it's 100%. Harley? Nah. It it's 100% cotton, not 50 50, but it's still legit. But the front says, Bikers are so horny, the crack of dawn ain't safe. <laughs> That's cool. <laughs> That's awesome. That is badass. I saw this t shirt and I was like, yep. <laughs> <laughs> And it's got like a, it's got like some stuff on the back. I guess from uh, Enid, Oklahoma. 
That back of that is freaking sweet too. Look at that. Yeah, dude. So that's awesome. So that's cool. like that's awesome. building up. Pretty cool, huh? What are you gonna price that, Scott? Um, I mean, it's a small. I'm thinking maybe seventy-five. Yeah. Nice. Best off. Yeah. Yeah. That's, you know? that's. I mean, it's a cool tee. Somebody's gonna buy this, and they, they you know, because it's just like just a cool. You don't see t-shirts like this no more. No. Are and you like gonna I cross said, on Etsy? Um, I don't, yeah, I'm put this. I'll probably put this on Etsy because like I guess I still need to redo my Etsy store and start doing that again because I was trying to. I was trying to get out of clothing, but then I see the <laughs> deals in clothing and I can't not buy them because I, I couldn't walk past a shirt like this. I can't walk past. 1996 Detroit Red Wings championship T-shirts. You know, that's certain stuff you just can't pass by. It's just like money just there. So, you know, I just guess right. I, I guess oh, they pull me back in. I know I got sucked back in the clothes. <laughs> so, I'm, 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 <laughs> <laughs> Kyle, you're a uh, of New Jersey. What do you got over there, dude? Yeah, it was uh, Nike, made in USA. Uh, Carolina Tar Heels uh, football jersey. Nice. It doesn't wow. have like any uh, like player on the back, which is good in a way, because then you know it's not if the player sucked, they wouldn't get like ridiculed if they wore it to a game or something like that. <laughs> but, um, I mean, there's no cracking or anything. Has the the big Nike tag here on the bottom, and oh, this yeah. is like four bucks, and it's getting ready to go on Etsy. Probably tomorrow morning, so nice. I'll probably put it at around like forty to fifty bucks, if not a little higher. Wait, Jersey Cherry Vin- Cherry Vinter said price my T shirt one hundred twenty five. Okay. Yeah, I mean <laughs> it's a one of a kind. It's classic. I, I mean it's. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. One twenty five. Someone Why from Eden, Oklahoma, will buy that from you. Calls for you, buddy. Okay, I'm gonna do one twenty five. Yeah, hardcore bikers have money. Make them pay up. Yeah, I mean, dude, I've sold some crazy Harley shirts over the years, and uh, that one I've, that you have, Scott's pretty darn wild, man. Um, even though it's not a Harley shirt, it's freaking got, it's got subject matter like a boss. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, all right, uh, let's see here. Last question we have for tonight. It was from Scott from earlier in the chat. He said, uh, "Long-term storage fees. Is this going to change the game on Amazon? What's what's uh." What's your thoughts, Mike? Long-term storage fees. Do you, you want to have 50,000 books over there, or do you want to have uh, 50,000 diapers, quantity of uh, you know, 10,000 each? I mean, luckily, a lot of the stuff I send in tends to sell rather quickly. Uh, some of the stuff, I'm specifically sending it in for Q4. Uh, I think I only had about 30 items that they told me needed to be cleared out for the long-term storage fees August 15th. And uh, I, it was pretty much a race to the bottom anyway, so I figured I'd cut my losses and try and make a profit on it at least, no matter how minimal. So I undercut the lowest FBA person by five cents and sold out of everything. So I think I'm having a very minimal long-term storage fee this year. Uh, go wide, not deep. I think that's the best piece of advice that's ever been given by anybody on this panel. Mm-hmm. Do not put all your eggs in one basket for one particular item because it can tank. Scott and I were talking about this earlier, uh, probably last week. Yeah. You know, something that you think may be hot today may not be so hot tomorrow, and you're stuck with all of them there. And, mm-hmm. you know, you're going to be doing everything you can to try and at least make your money back. And it may be at the point where you just. You know, it sinks like a battleship. Good point. Yeah, I mean, I think for for new people that are out there, yeah, that's a game changer for them because they, if they are not not aware of the storage fees, it's, it could put somebody out of business. You know, five hundred thousand dollars, two thousand dollars a hit. Yeah, that's it's going to be a hard pill to swallow. So again, you know, if you're new to Amazon, read the rules, but uh, and, understand even where you're sending in too. And I mean, I think I've mentioned this once before, maybe twice before on this show. I will buy up every single thing I see in front of me because that's the time to do it. I will test the market before I commit myself to sending all of them in. I'll send in five to ten at a time, and if those sell out rather quickly, I'll send the rest in. If they're just sitting there, I'll leave those there, and and I'll change the price accordingly. 
but you can better believe the rest of that stockpile that I accumulated and, and brought back with me, I'm doing the walk of shame and getting my money back to invest in something else. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that, man. A lot of people go, oh, I won't do that. Why not? It's your money. Get it back, get it back and just return it. <laughs> What's your thoughts, Scott? Well, I think, like, okay, well, you know, like, the long-term storage for you only applies if you have multiples of a product, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if you're going to go deep on something, make sure you do your research so you're not, you're not stuck with it, you know, because it happens. That's what these people, when you see people that's worried about long-term storage fees, because they got probably multiples of a hundred of something sitting at the warehouses, and it has it sold because they made a bad buy. So just think about what you're going to do before you go super deep on an item. Me personally, I would never recommend that. I mean, unless, you got, unless you're the only seller, you know what I'm saying, it's selling like hotcakes. But I would, the days of going to Walmart and buying multiples, hundreds to two hundreds of items are over. I mean, it is. You know, that low-hanging fruit days are over with. And you're just going to get stuck with inventory and, and, you know, and end up paying Amazon to keep it for you. So, I mean, go wide, not deep. You know, never, don't go ever go too deep. You know, everybody has horror stories about going too deep. So, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, for a lot of people, too, we've talked about this a little bit, too, with people that talk about private label and they keep saying, that's where the money's at. Is it? I mean, it's a risk. Private label's a risk. Same with importing from Alibaba to here, right? You want to have you want to have six thousand widgets over at Amazon, and you only sold three in six months. <laughs> you got to pay a storage fee on that. So there's a risk, right? That's why if you if you just if you if you have a, a big playing field and you got them all spread out, you're having a better situation, right? I'm not saying don't try private label, but understand that is a risk that that could happen to you if the shit doesn't sell. What do you think, Tyler? Yeah, I have to I have to agree with uh, everything that you guys have said. And, you know, with like what Mike said, you know, with testing out products, you know, I've done that same thing where I send in a few of one item and, you know, if they sell out really quick and then I'll go get some more and it's just, you know, I, I don't want to get to the point where I have like all those products in there and I, I I don't know if you just, you know, see it as I didn't take a lot of risk or not. I haven't run into that problem where I've gone too deep on an item. Um, but, uh, yeah, I just, I just try to play the field as I see it and, you know, if a few of them, you know, go in, they sell quick, you know, I'll go in a little further on it, but um, I just try to test it and not try to, you know, I try to make wise decisions with what I'm doing and, you know, some, you know sometimes I take big risks, sometimes it's like, okay, let's just try this out and see how it goes. Yeah, great advice from everybody, for sure. Um, the uh, Yeah, so again, you know, we're going to uh, approach the end here. Really appreciate all you guys checking us out, watching us again. This is episode number 10, you know. Um, you know, we're always looking to get other people involved too within the you know the reselling roundtable um, uh, Facebook group too. So we're you know, give us some feedback on this. Whether you're watching the replay or now, what do you think about the show? What what can be used to maybe improve it? Um, I'm gonna kind of throw out this thing here. Where we've got something going on. Uh, I'm just gonna say one word. It's called Trek. All right. It's gonna be coming soon, and it's gonna be a game changer. It's 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 going to be epic, and people are gonna be like, a bu 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 what? And people are going to hate and be like, oh, there he goes. There goes Mike, right? But when this thing happens, people are going to be like, damn, these guys went freaking G -G hashtag fucking pro. <laughs> right, I'll leave it at that. You know, stay tuned with that. you got to check out the uh, – I'll post something on my morning cup of Joe. And uh, obviously in Resource Roundtable, it's going to be pretty cool. Um, and, and that's it is what it is. Uh, but anyway, uh, again, appreciate all of you guys watching. And Scott, I know Scott is, and, and Mike Nagel and, and – Bill Northern Picker, um, I thought this would be a great time, and if you're cool with this, Scott, to talk about your your blab. I mean, you guys have been doing some. Awesome. My freezes up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anyway, uh, you've been doing some awesome stuff, and uh, you want to talk about that real quick? Do you mind? Yeah, not, not at all. Um, yeah, um, we've been on this the new platform Blab for a, a little over a week now. The me, Bill, Northern Picker, uh, Mike Nagler's been jumping in. Mike jumped in on a couple. You know, there's people that are from the Resellers Roundtable uh, uh, group. And it's completely, like, interactive. You know, it's, when you get in, it's four people on the screen. It's a it's an interactive chat. People can come in and out of the conversation on, on camera, and they can interact in the chat. And uh, basically, it's just... Um, you know, we're, we over there, we're talking, like, basically, like, the the lifestyle of being a reseller. You know, you know, I'm, 
you know, I have kids. Bill has grown kids. You know, you know, we talk about the, you know, dealing with the struggles with, you know, having a family and doing this. Um, you know, just the type of attitudes you had. We actually had a really in deep conversation about hoarding. <laughs> yeah, e hoarding the uh, the other night, and it was actually it was really really interesting because we were talking about resellers and hoarding and the, the line between that and getting emotionally attached to objects and then and, and the conversation grew organically into that from people in the chat and us talking and um, it's just a really cool platform we get we, we actually mean a lot of people that are getting interested in reselling because you know I mean like our community on YouTube Facebook it's it's, it's kind of we we're, we're, we're really niche and um, it's cool to reach out to people that's like I've never heard of Amazon. Uh, you could, you know, you can make money on Amazon. Of like, eBay is still around. I didn't know that. You know, it's, I've, we've met people like I've met people like that. Didn't even know eBay was still around. So I mean, there's a lot of people out there that's real interested in what we do as a living, and you connect with them, network with them. You know, so um, it's really cool. I mean, I would advise you to check it out. I mean, it's still in the beta process. Um, it's blab.im. And, um, and what's your handle, uh, Scott? On there is it? Um, you can follow me on Twitter. It's uh, at Cash Money Chili, and follow me on Twitter and Periscope. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, you'll automatically be able to find me on Blab because it's all interconnected with the Twitter and Blab and Periscope. So if you follow me on Twitter, you'll be able to find me on Blab. So we, um, me and Bill, we do a show. We're gonna do shows. I think uh, Tuesday nights and Wednesday nights. Maybe Tuesday, Wednesday, and like Thursday will be like a potpourri show. So. But um, so that's that's all it is. And real quick, uh, Scott, the question from Tom here: uh, Are the blab sessions uh, recorded for playback? Yeah, um, when like uh, we record them, like I actually recorded one and put it on my YouTube channel as a test to see if people would be interested in seeing it. I mean, I have, I've gotten some views on it. But yeah, we can, you, we can record them or not. We record them, they come up for playback. If not, you know. It, it doesn't, but yeah, the, they 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 are available on the Blab site for uh, for a short amount of time. But I do get the um, MP4 files where I can upload them to YouTube. So if it's interesting. Um, I might I'll start doing that. Yeah, I mean, I, w I was watching them last week. I mean, honestly, guys, you know, it's great information. It's great on topic. You know, it's reselling related, and then there's there's some shenanigans. You know, I mean, definitely it's always just, shenanigans. <laughs> it's always and you know, it's just fun, honestly, and, and it's educational too. Um, all right, so Tyler, are you ready to talk to, about your new ebook that's coming out? Are you ready to pimp that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 <laughs> so Tyler, all right, final words for Tyler. We'll get the Mike Nagel. We'll end it out of here again. Appreciate you guys watching, Mike. Uh, I'm sorry, uh, Tyler. Uh, got anything you want to want to throw out there for the people out there tonight? Well, I just wanted to say uh, thanks to everybody who came out and watched tonight, and I hope we answered your. Uh, questions that you had for us, and uh, like they were talking about, if you haven't checked out the thing on Blab, um, I've checked it out. It's a lot of fun. I haven't jumped in yet. The other night I was working, doing some stuff, so I was just kind of listening to it. But it's fun. It's interactive, and you do learn a lot. And there's a lot of good people in there, and there's a lot of new people uh, in there as well. So uh, again, thanks for watching tonight, and uh, we'll see you guys next week. Cool. All right, Band Hammer. What's up? Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Ultimo Nagel, all one word. Uh, yeah, I'm in the blabs too. It's a lot of fun. I like the atmosphere. It's laid back. We talk about reselling, just like we're doing here, except, you know, I keep jumping out so people can jump in and nobody ever takes advantage. And then I always jump in when it's too damn late. <laughs> when I'm getting the last word in, like right now, but, you know, it's all good. Uh, I love doing this show with you guys. I love uh, giving out content to the people in the community, answering their questions, you know, so people don't think I'm a grumpy asshole all the time, apparently. Uh, but, yeah, I have fun doing this show every week. You know, I did it last week, sick as shit, but, you know, I'm here, rain or shine, sleet or snow, 108 degrees outside or whatever, you know. Hey. I, I, I just... I love being a part of this. So, yeah, I got bars for days, dude. <laughs> Hashtag hardcore. So, uh, again, guys, appreciate all of you guys watching. Um, you know, the, the show is, is more just, you know, we get together and we share our, some tips, some secrets. You know, we're always positive about things that are going on. Uh -oh. Mike froze again. <laughs> mm -hmm.
Make sure to like and comment. Oh, oh. hoorah, hoorah. All right, guys, anyway, th- oh, it's freezing again. All right, so <laughs> we're going to end this here because my screen is going. Uh, again, appreciate you guys watching. You know, We just try to put out some information that hopefully will help you guys, motivate you, something that will pass the time to, uh, you know, when you're, when you're listing stuff, packing some stuff up out there. So uh, we appreciate all the support. We appreciate the likes. Uh, again, check out the, the Facebook group, resellersroundtable.com. It's free. And again... Stay tuned for Trek. We're out of here, guys. Thanks for watching. Peace. Whoa.